You ready? <laughs> hey, so I want to welcome everyone to the Ed Fernandez Show. Here with me is my road dog, oh my, my queen, my better half, COO of 1031 Crowdfunding, Ruth Fernandez. Yay! <laughs> hello, hello, everyone. So... This is episode one, two, three, four, five. We don't know. Right. But we'll figure it out. Yep. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to see what you got. Well, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, the show is all about life. Well, not all about life, but it's about life and money and we're going to have fun and, you know, situations. So we're here to talk about you and me. Okay. Right. How did this all get started? Right. We've been married 26 years. Mm hmm. Uh, we've got this multi-billion dollar company that we started together. True. We've got three beautiful children. True, so true. let me ask you, how did we get here? First off, by the grace of God. What does that mean? The grace of God. I mean, for us, it's been, our relationship with God has been the catalyst to everything we've done together. I mean, I've been with you longer than I've been without you. So we have literally built this thing together. Um and God has always been the center of everything we've done, including raising children, uh, our marriage, our businesses, everything. He's been, he's been the rock of it all and the launching path of everything we've done. So that's so, what that uh, was, means. Was that me? Are you a Jesus lover? A uh, thousand percent. Jesus freak? Uh, Jesus follower. <laughs> Bible thumper, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all that. All that. Yes, that's how we roll. So, so... You know, we have an interesting story of how we met. I mean, I, I got my version. I want to hear your version, and I'll tell them the real version. No, yours is more fun. No, well, I want to hear your version. I, I haven't heard it in a while. So how did we meet? So we met uh, 27 years ago. and we 27 met or 26? 27. We've been married oh, yeah, 26. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because we got married within five months of meeting each other. <sighs> so. Do we highly recommend it? We don't recommend it, uh, but it's been it's been a, a trip for us for sure, and that's kind of what we had to do for us. So we met at my friend's house. You went to a you went to watch the fight, Mike Tyson fight, and I know you're gonna say is the night the Tupac got shot. Yep, that was the night. Um, but I wasn't supposed to go because I had my tonsils removed. So I wasn't even supposed to be out. So I ended up going to my family re reunion for 20 minutes. And then I drove to Maui's house because the Lord and told me Maui? to. And who's Maui? Who's Maui? Well, he was my best friend at the time. He got saved when I rededicated my life. And him and I used to work at Home Depot together. Okay. Uh, you met him without knowing that we were friends. And he invited you. And he also invited me. So anyway, fast forward, I wasn't going to go. I ended up going, and the first person I see is you, and then suddenly I felt a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> so I stayed, and that's kind of how we met. Yeah, so, uh, you know, my side of the story is, you know, I was still brand new, uh, you know, uh, coming out of, you know, what I was coming out of. and Heathenous. so Yeah, you know, um, by the way, we love Jesus if you don't know that, but, you know, that's another story. But uh, I was driving over to, uh, you know, this party. It was the night that, you know, Mike Tyson was fighting uh, Sheldon. And, uh, you know, on my way, I was still kind of like new, you know, got some phone numbers from some other girls. Yeah. Just want to say. And, uh, I, you know, I was there for a little while and then I started leaving. And then I, I see this van pull up and she came out. Um, and so Maui introduced us. You know, I'm a foot guy. So the first thing I do is I look down at the feet. And I said, okay, we can talk. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Hot pink toenails. Stop it. <laughs> and so uh, we ended up talking, got to like 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we ended up going to church together. Yeah, uh, you went to my church, my service at 9 o'clock. And then I went to your service where you were an usher at the 11 o'clock service at your church. Okay. And then we ended up going to my brother's house. Mm -hmm. And then five months later, we were married. Yep. So ever since, uh, 26 years now. 26 years. So that's years. how we met. So I'm reading some notes right here. And um, what, what would you say 
helped us get through, you know, the practical things. We know, you know, God helped us get through a lot of things. But what were the practical things that you think, you know, helped us get through some tough times? Because, you know, marriage is not perfect, right? We, we're not perfect. We're still learning. Um, but, you know, we've been married 26 years. So what helped us get us here? I think commitment, honestly, at the end of the day, uh, commitment is what kept us in it because there were so many times, especially in the beginning of our marriage, uh, just melting our lives together, two strong people and wanting to make it happen. I remember that one time when we got into this huge fight and we sat at the table and we said, hey, are we going to do this? And if we're going to do this, we need to change some things. And I think it was the commitment to the marriage and to create a new normal for our children because we didn't have role models yeah. that had functional marriages when we were coming up. So it was the decision to make something different and create something different for our children that I think that pulled us through those really, really difficult seasons. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that's true. I think... You know, as a guy uh, on my end, I, I think it's easy to run away from situation, especially, you know, I just grew up with my mom, right? My, you know, episode zero, 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 I, you know, my dad wasn't around. And so it, it was easy just to run away from situations. But, you know, we always wanted a better life for our kids, right? So you grew up without, you know, you had your parents, but it was dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up with my parents, uh, well, without my dad, but my situation was dysfunctional. So we, you know, we kind of wanted to figure things out and do better for our kids. And I think you're right. The commitment was the first step, but after that, you know, okay, great. Yeah. We put a flag, you know, down and say, we're going to do this thing, but how do you figure it out? Right. There's no book on being married, right? You got a lot of books that you can read, but unlike a driver's license or some like, profession that you take, you got to take a test, pass the test, and then you get a certificate saying you're, you're a professional. Not in marriage, right? You go and say, I do, and they give you a piece of paper, and all of a sudden now you're married, and now you have to figure it out, Yeah, right? So it makes it tough. So how did you, how did, on your part, you know, knowing me in the way I was, mm -hmm. how did you figure out your role in this successful marriage. And then I can explain how I figured out my role. Yeah, I, I think for me, it was coming to terms with the fact that I had a role to play in the marriage. And I also had a responsibility in the marriage. So not only I'm here to be your wife, but I still have to be uh, a person who evolves, a person who uh, wants to be better, uh, a person who has faults and realizes, hey, I'm not perfect. And even though my outbursts are not as intense as his are, but they can be just as destructive. And, and I think that just coming to terms with the fact that in the, in the success of it, I have a role. And in the failure of it, I also have a role. And, uh, and not wanting to not wanting to give up on the dream that we had. Yeah. Yeah. For our children. Yeah. Well, for me it was um and I'm still learning this by the way. You know, I I by no means you know, am a perfect husband, but I think I I think it has a lot to do with serving too, right? You know, cuz our emotions, how we feel is kind of like if you allow your life to kind of and your decisions be made based on how you feel, you're all over the place, right? Yeah. You're like irrational, undisciplined. It's just your cuckoo. And so I, I, what I had to learn is I had to learn, it's not how I feel. If I just do what I'm told to do, right? So when I say I do what I'm told to do, you know, you know the Bible talks about a lot of things that I need to do. Right. As a husband, I need to serve. I need to, you know, as Christ died, you know, for the church, I got to die for you. And that's look like hard to do. Right. I, I for me, very hard to do. I'm a type A guy. Right. I want to be in control. I'm the dominant one. It's going to be the way I say it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn that you weren't just there, mm -hmm. that you were a partner of mine. Right. That you had 
equal say, equal rights, equal talents. And, and I think it took me a long time to figure that out. And when I started figuring that out and started seeing that from you, I think it made it easier for me, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, because, I mean, the vernacular that you have is how you do things and how you react to things. And that's, that's your model. And I, I think that where we sometimes go wrong is ex expecting the other person to follow the same model that we follow and not allowing them to be an individual in their own right. And yeah. I think that, that we had to come to terms with the fact that, okay, you're very, uh, you're very strong and, and it's okay for you to be strong. And you have so many qualities that I wish I had. And being able to celebrate those qualities, I think that has allowed me to uh, yield or submit or, or follow your lead you know, even when, and I'm going to say here, even when you didn't deserve it, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and the same, I think, that applies for you to me, that you have to realize that I was a completely different entity and being able to navigate me in the way that I could respond in a positive way, it was also a learning curve for you. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, 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 Obviously, it's not easy, but as time goes by, right, it gets better and better and mm -hmm. better, and it gets easier and easier and easier. What what were the characteristics that you saw in me that made you want to marry me? Uh, how in love with Jesus you were. Okay, what that does that mean? One. I your your fire, your zeal for God when I first met you, was something that was very, very attractive to me. Because, um, you know, again... You mean I didn't look good? Well, <laughs> everybody knows you're beautiful. Oh, everybody geez. knows. Everybody knows you're the pretty one in the relationship. <laughs> and it's totally fine with me. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I, you know, there's... As a woman, there's something very uh, appealing for a man who runs after God. And I think that that's very, very attractive. That in itself. So I could tell you, uh, as far as my attraction to you, obviously your good looks. Um, but you were, you are, to me today, I didn't see it then, but I see it so much now. You are the nicest person that I know. It is <laughs> like you are so kind, right? You're so good to your friends and you're so... Um, you know, thoughtless, right? Even when it comes to me, you kind of roll out the red carpet for me. And, and like you said, even when I don't deserve it, I think, I think that was what attracts me to you now. Before it was your good looks. Now it's like, okay, as we get older and older, you're still beautiful to me, by the way, mm -hmm. right? But as we get older, that like is not important anymore. It's, it's like the qualities of the individual. And, and for me, for you, you're so kind. You're you know, you like, if you don't know a subject matter, you will study it until the cows come home and then you become an expert. And that's why, you know, with 1031 crowdfunding, we've grown by 422%. I, you know, Inc. Magazine and all that other stuff um, because I couldn't do it on my own. And so, you know, when you came on uh, and, and took over the role of COO, you, 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 you put things in place where you made people feel so welcome because you're so nice that it made it easy for the company to grow. And I think today, um, that's what I really love about you is just how smart you are and how nice you are. Oh, thank you, honey. <laughs> I know we're, you know, we're... We're dating. We're on a date. We're on a date right now, you know. <laughs> we're kind of trying to figure this whole thing out. So... You know, we work together. Yeah. I see you every day, all day long. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? How do we, how do we separate our personal lives and our business lives? Or does that even exist? It doesn't exist for us, right? Yeah. It, it just doesn't. And anyone that tells you that they can detach, uh, in my opinion, they're lying. Because there's no way you can have communication if you don't communicate about everything. And we're here eight hours a day. We have all these different personality dynamics and we, we have so much to talk about sure. when it comes to the business that, and plus I love it so much that I don't think what I do don't want to. You love what? Uh, the business? Yeah. You like working? 
I love working. You used to be like, you know, hanging out with your friends. I know. I do miss up, those days. You know, going to now now you're here every day. You love it? I love I love uh the impact that it's having. Okay. I love what we're creating. I love to see the evolution of families. I love to see opportunity. I love uh what it has done for you. I love the fact that you have created this machine that is creating a uh, legacy for generations to come. So yeah, I love everything about it. I can't not, how can you not? Plus wow. I'm super grateful. Wow. That's that. I didn't know that, you know, that you, you loved coming here every day. I thought it was like, Oh, I'd rather be staying in bed and going out to lunch. Well, I mean, <laughs> those are fun, but you can only do that for so long. Um, what are the effective ways or what type of advice would you give couples? You know, number one, couples that may be struggling in their marriage. And then if couples are not struggling in their marriage, couples that do business together. I mean, let's start with struggling in marriage. How, how, do, we, how do we help that? You know, I think for me, honor in the relationship and honor as human beings is extremely important. If what, I, what do you mean by honor? You know, cause you know, we, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you know, I want to make sure that when we use certain terms, we kind of like people could understand what, what is honor? For, How do I honor you? Yeah. For me is respecting and honoring who God created you to be and do. I think that that is the greatest compliment and the greatest service you can give another human being by allowing them to be exactly who they are. And, and in the midst of that, ushering the better version of themselves by honoring who they are in this present time. Does so that me, make sense? Yeah, so let me jump in really quick. So here's what I, here's what I would say, right? So I'm going to use me as an example, okay? Mm -hmm. So when I first met you, mm -hmm. you were bubbly, Right, you were funny. Uh, I'm still funny. Yeah, but you, you know, you were like, you were like this untouched flower. You know what I mean? It was just, and then over the years, right, you had to morph or change your personality mm -hmm. because of me, mm -hmm. right? And and now, you know, now you're kind of coming back to that mm -hmm. part of who you truly are because you can. You can, you feel you're okay and secure and feeling vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So I think when you say honor, you said this, you said, allow people to be what they were meant to be. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of times in marriages, you know, me being an A personality type of guy, I wanted to control you, right? I controlled you. I, I wanted to know what money you were spending, who you were hanging out with, why weren't you home at the right time, how come you didn't cook dinner, why isn't the house clean, yada, 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 yada. And, you know, you had to kind of change, right? But that is the perfect example of dishonoring someone. That's my point, yeah. right? So when we say honor, I was showing you and doing a dishonor. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and there's a, you cannot honor dysfunction. Right. Right. So I and you know and you know how I was. I always called you out. Yeah. I, I if anything, she didn't pull no punches. I I didn't, and I always it would, it would piss me off too. Right. No, for sure. I mean, I was for I'd sure. Get, but but it, I was the closest to you. I was the closest mirror to you. Yeah. Right. So if I allowed bad behavior, then I co-sign on that behavior. Then I have no say on my boundaries. So my boundaries were always very well defined. Yeah. What you crossed them a thousand times over. Yeah. But you always you were always able to go jump right back and know, okay, this is this is her boundary. Yeah. If I willingly break it, then I, I'm gonna take the consequences. But anyway, I that's what I meant by by honor. If I honor the healthy, the one that wants to be the better version of themselves, if I honor that, I feel that you can, uh, when when you're not at your 100%, yeah. I can still honor who you are and the essence of who you are, not your actions. Did we almost, uh, did we almost end this thing? 
Yeah. Uh, we were 15 years into our marriage and I went to file for divorce. And and why? Why 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 did that happen? Because you were dishonoring. Well, but I mean, I want more details. What what was I doing that was causing dishonor? I mean, you know, I get it. Uh, you know, you know, we we love God, right? Mm -hmm. And we're we use a lot of terms that more people that are in the church understand, mm -hmm. right? But if someone is watching this show. And they're not church folk, which is fine. You know, mm -hmm. people are going to like the show. They're not going to like the show. They might be offended in some ways or others. And that's okay. That's yeah. it's the show's not for them. Yeah. But what I'd like to do, you know, is I'd like to, you know, simplify it, mm -hmm. you know, dilute the terms and say, well, how did I dishonor you? What was I doing to finally you say, I'm done with this? Yeah. Uh, for me, and the vernacular that I can use is, you were mean-spirited toward me. Um, and, and with that, spirit comes control, comes uh, belittling, comes all kinds of different so, adjectives. So I was mean? It. Yeah. Abusive? Yes. Uh, not physically, but Not physically, verbally. but very verbally abusive. Mm -hmm. um, I, If I can go back and look, I, I think uh, one of the things that I heard you guys say is that when you heard the garage door open, and knowing I was coming home, everyone was getting ready for the impact. Yeah. Right. Even our children. Yeah. Right. And that kept on for years and years and years mm -hmm. because of the dishonoring. Right. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where you said, I, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And you you were going to file for divorce. I can remember, you know, you had this little plan going mm -hmm. and, you know, we were moving. Mm -hmm. Right. And you said, honey, why don't we get a, a smaller apartment? Right. And I'm like, Ruth, we got all this stuff. We're going to pay less rent, but we're going to pay a lot of rent for storage. That doesn't make any sense. And the reason why you said that is because you were planning on leaving me yeah. and you didn't want to leave me with a big giant house, house mm -hmm. right? And so that's why you were, were doing that. But what, what made you stay? Why, why did you stay and didn't leave? Now we're 26 years in, 11 years ago. Yeah, at that time. No, wait. Eight years ago, my eight bad. Years, eight years ago, yeah. yeah. Uh, at that time, I didn't leave because remember we were in the living room and you said, I got this email. Yeah. And if you wait it out, I'll promise you, this is my last time me promising you that I will change. I will change. And did I change? Yes, you did. I did, huh? You did change. Um, whoop, whoop. And, and I remember being- Put in some work. Yeah, going to the attorney and saying, okay, don't file. And I remember going, at, sitting in the parking lot at Albertsons and I went to buy a pint of ice cream and I said, Lord, if you don't come through, like I'm done. And I remember scooping and eating the entire pint of ice cream sitting in the parking lot thinking, I hope this is your best for me. I, I really, I like, I want you to come through because I don't want to get a divorce. I don't want to, you know, uproot my children. This has to work. Yeah. And he said to me, if you honor my covenant, I will honor you. And this is what the show is about, right? Yeah. We're not perfect. We never will be perfect. Yeah. But we'll figure it out. Yeah. And I just want to say something to your point. Uh, I think that what you were, the undisciplined, dishonoring part of you, I think that it was a coping mechanism that you had to adapt given the circumstances that you were brought up in. So I just want to leave the audience with... If you are struggling with being a narcissist or controlling or all of that, you may want to look at the source as to why you operate under that type of, what would you say, attitude, uh, way of living? Personality. I mean, it, 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 it you know, it, it, look, when you're growing up without a dad and all you hear is arguing and fighting and that's all you know. And all you know is how to get your way by pouting on the floor. Like, you know, little kid at Toys R Us, you know, couldn't get his toy. So he's going to pout and, and throw himself on the floor, right? That, that's who I was and that's how I grew up. And so when I couldn't get my way with you and it was the controlling didn't work anymore, the fear didn't work anymore, I had to make a decision whether to, to, to save my marriage or 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 get a divorce. And, and that wasn't an option for, mm -hmm. for me. And so, you know, 
I don't know if I should apologize for where we went. I didn't think this was going to be such a serious type conversation, <laughs> you know. But, you know, I think there's a lot of people that need to hear this stuff. Yeah, I think so too. Right? I mean, who else is out there talking about, you know, you, you look at us and we look like we're the perfect couple. We're not mm -hmm. the perfect couple. No. Right? We still have issues. Still. We still argue. But we argue respectfully. Right. Right? We don't, when we get in arguments, I, I'm not going to call you names. Yeah. You're not going to call me names. Yeah. I'm not going to try to make you, and if I do make you feel a certain way, you're going to put me in check real quick, and mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Right? So I think, I think, I think, you know, if we can wrap it all up mm -hmm. and summarize where we've been, married 26 years, yes. right? Uh, an immigrant from Mexico who got her citizenship, born in a cave. Born in a cave, born in extreme in, poverty. Extreme poverty with mm -hmm. bats and everything like that, right? That's where <laughs> she comes from, right? And then a guy with no dad, my mom, who did the best she could on food stamp welfare government cheese, mm -hmm. right? Now to where we are, multi-billion dollar company, Right. Successful marriage. All our dreams have come true. Now we're making other people's dreams come true. Now we got to show and we're actually putting it out there and telling everybody about our story. I think it's it's a it's a great way to say, you know, thank you, honey, yeah. for sticking it out with me. Yeah. Thank you for uh, being willing to to learn and to yield and to trust and to become the person that you are now. You're the best thing that's ever <laughs> happened to me in my life. I got to tell you. You are too. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Yes, yes. Thank you, know, you for I'm having me. I'm sure we're going to do this again. I, I apologize if, you know, it got a little <laughs> too serious. Didn't know it was going to go down this yeah. road. But I, I think it, it's important for people to understand. Yeah. But, honey, thank you so much for being on the show. And everybody, thank you. thank you so much for watching. Yes, Until thank next you. time. Yes, thank you so much.